Are you looking for a travel trailer with double wide bunks and a Murphy bed? Well, stick around, folks. We found three awesome models. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike with RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we release a brand new video. And we also invite you to check out our website at rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing there as well. But without any further ado, let's get into our review of travel trailers with wide bunk beds. This travel trailer is the StarCraft Autumn Ridge model number 20MB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,090 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,160 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,250 pounds. The hitch weight is 530 pounds. It measures in at 24 feet 6 inches long and it can sleep up to 8 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you'll notice that your couch and Murphy bed are on the right. Then we wrap on around through the kitchen and dinette area. Off to my right here is where the bunks are located and behind me is where the bathroom is. Now, when I first walk into this travel trailer, what I feel right away is that it's got a very nice, rich, luxurious feel in here. And that's because the cabinetry and the sofa and dinette decor is kind of darker. It just looks really nice and luxurious in here. There are no slide outs in this camper and so floor space is limited but the dinette's a really good size and we make the most of the space here with the murphy bed and couch and so it doesn't feel cramped or too small in here at all it actually feels pretty good now on my right hand side first thing you'll notice is this nice comfy couch with an end table on each side which is also the end table when your bed is in place on this side we have receptacles located just above the end table on the other side, we have receptacles and USB ports as well. And each of the end tables also opens up for additional storage under each of them. And then the couch itself has this little flip down door and you can access even more storage under there. Now to set up your Murphy bed, it's really pretty easy. You just jackknife the sofa out, pull the D-rings, and then this little platform folds right on out. And then you grab your mattress which is covered in plastic because it's brand new and unfold that. Now, some of you guys are going to be worried about where the fold is in the mattress and it's definitely a little more than halfway up. So you have two choices here. You can sleep on this the way it is, or when you get set up for camp, you just grab your mattress, flip it around and get the fold lower in the bed. So it's below where your hips and lower back are when you sleep and you'll be much more comfortable that way. You'll also notice here there's a, a reading light overhead that you can turn on and off with a push of a button right in the center of the light. And then on each side, you've got these nice deep wardrobe cabinets. These are really super deep. I mean, they're three feet deep. So good amount of space for you to hang your garments in here and store other things as well. And then finally, you've got some open storage over top of the bed. Now, if this were me, I would probably get some cargo netting and install it from one end to the other so it would hold things in place while I'm traveling. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't want to put up anything up here because it might fall off the shelf while you're bouncing up and down the road. One thing I forgot to mention is that on each side, there's also a small drawer located underneath of the wardrobe cabinet. So here we are at the kitchen location, and this is what we call an inline kitchen. All of your kitchen appliances and fixtures are in line. Starting up top here, you'll notice we have a pretty good size cabinet up above for some storage area. Then you've got a regular microwave oven here, and you can fit, you know, a standard size plate in here very, very easily. Down below that, we've got a three burner propane stove. And one thing I want to point out here is that it does have a little bit of a backsplash in place behind the stove, but there's nothing on the side of it. So if you're cooking on your stove and some food were to splatter, you know, you could mess up this side of your cabinet. So it might be a good idea to store a cutting board in this area to sort of protect it. Or if it was me, I might go out and just buy some peel and stick tile at Home Depot 
put it on the cabinet here and create my own little backsplash just to protect your cabinet. Now down below your cooktop here, you've got all these nice lighted knobs and then you even have a real oven. So if you wanna cook a pizza, bake some cookies, what have you, you are all set. Now next to your stove and oven is a huge kitchen sink. I, I almost feel like it's too big for the camper. It's gigantic. It's one of the biggest sinks I've ever seen in a camper. Ours isn't even this big in our class A, I don't think. But anyway, um, the reason I think it's too big is it because it chews up almost all of your countertop space. You are left with a little bit of countertop space over here, and you could certainly use the um, sink cover to create more countertop space in here too. Now, just next to the countertop on the side of the cabinet is where a receptacle is located. So if you did want to use a coffee pot or a toaster here, you could easily plug it in right on the side. Down below that, we've got three full extension drawers that are really nice and deep. And then we even have more storage underneath the kitchen sink. Now, as we work our way down the inline kitchen, we get to the refrigerator location. And this is a great refrigerator. It's nice and big and tall, it's nice and deep. And this is a 12 volt refrigerator, which means it can run on shore power or a battery. And it also runs with the use of a compressor. And so that means your fridge will get colder faster and it's much more efficient. Now, just across from the kitchen is where the dinette is located. And up top here, you'll notice you have a couple of really big cabinet doors, lots of storage space up there, nice window over top of your dinette table. And the dinette table itself is located on the campsite of the trailer. So your view out the window is a view of your campsite, which is kind of a nice thing. Now in this dinette, I would say, you know, you could squeeze four people in here, but it would probably need to be like two adults and two kids. I don't think you're gonna get four adults at this table very comfortably. It's just a little too small. And the reason for that is because this camper doesn't have any slide outs. And usually when there's no slide outs, the trade off for that is a little bit smaller dinette. So I think they've done their best though to balance this out and give you as much dinette space as they can, but also give you enough floor space to make everything else work also. Now the dinette table will drop down and this can convert into another bed. And if you were to do that, you would end up with a bed in here that's about uh, almost six feet. So about five feet, 10 inches long. And then the width on it would be about 40 inches. And so, you know, maybe a smaller adult or a couple of kids, small kids could sleep here as well. There's also storage underneath both of the dinette benches, but you have to remove the cushions, which isn't hard to do. Just pull up the plywood underneath and then you can access all of that storage space. Now the TV location in here is right behind the dinette and this is where you would mount your TV on the wall. You'll notice that you've got your cable receptacle and other cable TV outlets up above. So everything's accessible for you. It's a good location for the TV. You can see it from the couch. You can see it from the owner's bed. Uh, if you're sitting at the dinette, the folks on that side would be able to see it. So for the most part, it works. It's really the best location in this camper for a TV. So here we are behind the dinette location and just past the kitchen. And this is where the double bunks are located. So they're double wide bunks, one over top of the other. And uh, let's see what size these are. First of all, the bunks are about 76 inches by, gosh, four feet wide. So a decent sized bunks in here. Each bunk has a sleeping weight limit of 300 pounds and a storage weight limit of 200 pounds. They do the differentiation because you can sleep up here, that's dead weight laying on here, no problem for 300 pounds. But when you're traveling up and down the road, they tell you to limit the storage to 200 pounds because that's not dead weight. When your tra travel trailer is bouncing, all that storage is bouncing and it could crush your bunk. So you don't wanna overload these while you're driving. But each of these bunks has all four, well, three out of four, of the elements that we look for when we look at bunk beds. And those are, does it have an exterior window? Does it have a light? Does it have a receptacle? And does it have USB ports? Now the top bunk has all four of those features and the bottom bunk has three out of four of those features. The only thing it's missing is USB ports. But honestly, if you have a receptacle, you can just plug your USB adapter in there and your kid can be in the bottom bunk and keep his you know, tablet or phone charged just as well. So it totally works. 
So here I am in the bathroom, which is located all the way in the back of the trailer and right next to the bunks we just looked at. And this bathroom is unique because it has a bathtub. So for you folks that have toddlers, maybe you want to give your little kids a bath, this might be a good choice for you. Now standing inside the bathtub, let's check out the, the headroom that we have in here. And I'm only going to measure it to the ceiling because there's not really a skylight. There's just a little fan in here and I don't think you could stand and keep your head under the fan all the time but you've got about eh, six feet three inches of space in the shower which isn't bad and overall the total ceiling height in the entire camper uh, comes out to about 81 inches or six feet nine inches of height so a decent amount of headroom in the camper i also like in the shower it's got a nice surround built in here and the surround has three corner shelves that you can use for your soap and shampoo it's got a removable wand and then of course it's got the one thing i don't like in a shower and that is the shower curtain uh, i really wish it had a retractable shower door here but don't let it stop you from buying this trailer i mean you can certainly Take out the shower curtain, put in your own retractable shower door, a couple hundred bucks, you got yourself a nice door. Just outside of the shower is where the commode is located. And then this is set up a little differently. This bathroom has a door that closes and then your bathroom sink is located outside of the bathroom. Now, I like this kind of setup personally, especially if you have two or three kids that are camping with you. Someone can be in the bathroom taking a shower or going to the bathroom and someone else can be out here brushing their teeth or getting their makeup on or whatever's going on. So it's a good way to split up the bathroom. Over top here, you have a nice size medicine cabinet, a very good size vanity sink with some countertop space around and you've even got a receptacle here. And then down below the sink, you have additional storage. And last but not least, here I am on the commode. And if this door were closed, I would not pass the elbow test on this side, but I've got plenty of room on the other. This travel trailer is the Forest River Surveyor Legend, model number 19 MDBLE. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,081 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 770 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,851 pounds. The hitch weight on this trailer is 470 pounds. It measures in at 23 feet, seven inches long, and it can sleep up to seven people. When you first walk into this camper on the right hand side, you've got your sofa and Murphy bed. Or as we wrap on around, you've got your dinette, and then kitchen area. Behind me to my left is the bathroom and to my right are the bunks. So when you first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing I notice is there's a really good amount of floor space in here. That's because the dinette is located in a slide out that's about three feet deep. So it creates a very open and spacious feeling in here. Now, just to the right hand side is where your sofa and Murphy bed are located. And first of all, if you're sitting here as using and using this as a sofa, I think it's a very, very comfortable setup. You can relax. You've got a nice big end table on each side complete with a cup holder and then on each side of the end tables are receptacles and usb ports and there's even really large drawers underneath of the sofa for plenty of storage speaking of storage just above the sofa and the bed location is this bank of cabinets now it's totally open from one end to the other which means if you store things up here you probably want to put them in bins because that way they won't go flying all around while you're driving up and down the road another really nice feature to these doors is they're on sort of a um, spring-loaded hinge so they'll stay in the upright position every now and then we come across a travel trailer where these doors don't stay up they just flop back down so you have to hold them up while you're accessing things but this is a very convenient feature to have for these cabinets now the murphy bed setup is really easy to use first thing you do is just jackknife your sofa out pull the d-ring on the side and this platform drops down and then your mattress drops down as well and this will allow you to sleep i guess east to west in here rather than north to south um, one disadvantage to this kind of a setup is if the person sleeping towards the front of the camper has to get out of bed in the middle of the night, they're going to have to interrupt their partner a little bit. But hey, in a camper this size, it works really, really well. It's There's kind also... of interesting to note that the sofa comes out a little further than the bed, which is 
it's not pretty usual. unusual. <laughs> yeah, we usually don't see that as well. Normally, because the beds are turned the other way, so you can get out from each side. But I think if they did that in here, you know, it would stick out into the room too far. Now, this bed is, oh gosh, about 80 inches and it's 60 inches wide, so that makes it a full residential queen size bed in here. So that's a nice feature. But if this, if this stuck out 80 inches into the room, it would come all the way out to here. And so that's why they turn the bed east-west instead of north and south. Um, one other thing to note in here is there's a nice big window up front. And then of course you have a side window so you can get a little bit of ventilation in here as well. There are no lights under here. I kind of wish there were, but that's okay. You've got these lights for reading and they can turn on and off independently. So you can sort of set the lighting the way you'd like it. So here I am sitting at the dinette in here and this is a good sized dinette. I mean, if I was sitting in here and somebody was sitting next to me, I think we'd have plenty of room to get along while we're eating dinner. Uh, so I would say you could sit four people pretty comfortably at this dinette table. It's also got this really nice light fixture above, so it adds a little bit of luxury to it. And then it's got this just gigantic window over top of your dinette, which I love having a window by the dinette. Now, underneath of both of these dinette seats, there's also storage space that's accessible. You kind of have to just remove the cushions and then there's a piece of plywood. It's got a, a little hinge that pops up. The door stays open while you access anything that you need that you have stored under your dinette booth benches. Now, in addition to that, this table will drop down and this can become another bed. And if you do that, you would have a bed that's about, wow, this is 72 inches by about 40 inches wide. So an average height adult or a kid or two could sleep here pretty comfortably. Now, one thing about this dinette table is that it does have these legs on the bottom of it. And more and more though, we're seeing legless dinette tables. So when you have these legs under here, I don't know about you, but I find them in the way all the time. I kick them, I hit them, I smash my shins on them. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. We had a dinette with legs in our Class C RV and it was pretty inconvenient. Our new Class A RV has a legless dinette table which is very convenient. So just something to think about when you're looking at a camper and if this is going to be a problem for you or not. You're at least aware of it now that you know about it. And then one other thing about this dinette is it has the step up. We see this very often in smaller trailers that have a dinette in a slide out. There is somewhat of a step up. Now this one isn't that big. It's only about eight inches. We've seen them as high as 12. And in my opinion, that's too big of a step up, but an eight inch step is really pretty normal because most steps have eight inch risers anyway. So you're kind of used to that height. And one other thing to note about this dinette is there are no electric outlets around the dinette or under the dinette at all. In my opinion, that's a little bit inconvenient. I don't know about you, but this is where Susan and I would sit. We might have our laptops open, whether we're working or just, you know, looking for places to go and explore around the campground. Uh, and you might need to plug in your laptop when you're doing that. And there are no receptacles here at all. It's not that uncommon because in most slide outs, you won't find receptacles in the walls, but normally they'll put a receptacle like under the dinette booth somewhere, and they did not do that in here for some reason. Now, here I am at the kitchen, which is right across from the dinette, and this is what we would call an inline kitchen, right? All of your kitchen appliances and sink and everything are just in a line. It's a very efficient and uh, well set up kitchen design. Now, up top here, you've got a couple of really nice cabinet doors with glass inlays, and then there's a big storage area up there. Just below that, we've got our lighted range hood, you have a nice sized single bowl sink here with a big gooseneck faucet overhead. Now right next to the kitchen sink is where the two burner cooktop is located. They've positioned these burners so it's one in front of the other and that allows for a little bit of countertop space between the burners and the sink. They also took the cutting board and they have a little hanging hanger here for it. Uh, someone in one of our videos recently just said, hey, there's a cutting board in there. Is there a way to hang it up? Well, in this RV there is and we're seeing 
seeing that more and more often now where the manufacturers have a spot. Now, very often this cutting board is the same size as the sink and you can use it as a sink cover to create even more countertop space. But in this case, this is a little larger than the sink so it won't fit in there. One other thing to note, is that there's no real backsplash around your burners in here. So if you cook bacon or something that's gonna splatter, this cabinet could be at risk of getting, you know, delaminated over time from grease getting on there. So if you do end up buying a travel trailer like this, just be aware of that. And you might need to buy, you know, um, some peel and stick tile or something really simple at Home Depot and put it here and create a little backsplash both on the side and behind your burners just to keep your camper from, you know, damage from any splatter that comes from cooking. Now, just below the cooktop, we have a microwave down here. And that's great if you have little kids that are cooking food. For me, it's a little, it's a little low, but hey, it is what it is. And then you've got a fully extendable drawer for all of your kitchen utensils and then the fullest extension full extension drawer i've ever seen in my life <laughs> now this drawer is shorter and that's because of the kitchen you know the kitchen sink pipes that are under there i just thought it was funny that this thing pulled out as far as it does there's also a central vac down below so you can easily sweep up the floor and whisk your crumbs away Finally, we get to the refrigerator in here, and this is a very good size refrigerator for this size of a camper, really for any camper. This is a good size fridge. It's got a nice deep freezer up top, big refrigerator down below. It is a 12 volt refrigerator. We are just not seeing any new campers anymore that are propane powered, the old absorption style refrigerators, but these are fantastic. They're efficient. They chill much quicker. I know with our absorption style fridge, we had to get it cold like for 12 hours overnight before it was cold enough to put our food into it with a compression style or a compressor style refrigerator it's cold in three hours or four hours now just across from the refrigerator is where the tv is mounted in here and this is a great spot for the tv you can easily see it from the couch or your bed in the evening and you can even see it from one side of the dinette and you can also pull it out and swivel it around a little bit so it's in a fantastic spot now the double bunks in this camper are extra wide, which is a great feature. So you, they're actually considered double, double bunks. Um, and so they are about 74 inches by 44 inches wide. So a very good size bunk bed up here. You could easily sleep one person up here and definitely two smaller kids. Um, they don't list the weight on these bunks anywhere that I can see, so I don't know what the weight capacity on them is. You'd have to look that up on the, on the manufacturer's website if it's even listed there. But these bunks do have most of the main things that we look for to make a bunk bed comfortable. They've got a window, they each have their own light, and they both have their own USB ports. So if the kids are in here and they've got their tablets, phones, whatever, uh, they'll be nice and comfy and be able to plug in and keep things charged up. They don't have electrical receptacles, but they do have USBs, so that should be enough. Now, one other thing to note on a bunk bed setup like this, where you only have access to the corner, is how the ladder works. So, if one kid's up top and he uses the ladder to get up there, now the kid that's going to sleep on the bottom has to move the ladder out of the way to get in. I know if I had little brothers, I would torture the heck out of them and put this in place so they'd be trapped under here. But it is just something to think about with these corner style bunk setups. And that is what do you do with the ladder to let the kids on the bottom bunk get in and out. Now, one other final feature with these bunks is there is additional storage under the bottom bunk space. So that's a great feature because as you know, in a travel trailer, storage is so important. So here I am in the bathroom in this travel trailer, and I gotta say, this is a really, really big bathroom for a camper that's under 25 feet long. I mean, it's, it is terrific. So standing in the shower, as you guys know, I'm 5'11". Let's do our height check in here. I say we have a total of, gosh, six feet, five inches into the skylight, and the whole entire camper itself, ceiling height comes in at about six feet, eight inches. So a good amount of ceiling height 
in this camper overall. You'll also notice in here that uh, there's a four shelves in here for shampoo and soap, and it's got a retractable shower door. I think of all the campers we've been in, there are very, very few that use shower curtains anymore. More and more are going to the retractable shower door. And I would like to personally claim full responsibility. <laughs> you taking credit for that Full one? credit for this change that's <laughs> happened in all these travel trailers. <laughs> Anyway, it's a decent sized shower. It's not really very deep, but uh, you could stand a little sideways in here. Your sprayer is always removable, so you can make it work. You'd be very comfortable in a shower in here. Now, Susan's standing in the shower and I'm at the other end of the bathroom. And as you can see, we have a nice sized medicine cabinet. It's even got a little shelf in here so you can put all your toothbrushes in there and they'll, they'll hang down below the cabinet. You've got an okay sized countertop with a nice deep sink in here. You've also got an electrical receptacle right here. And then of course all your tank controls are here in the bathroom as well. So that's a convenient location for them. Down below your sink, you have additional storage under here. And I also want to point out your toilet paper holders on the side of this cabinet. And then it even has a couple of hooks up here to hang your towels. Finally, here I am sitting on the commode and this bathroom passes the elbow test with flying colors. This travel trailer is the Ember Overland model number 221 MSL. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 5,680 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,315 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 6,995 pounds. The hitch weight is 655 pounds. It measures in at 26 feet, one inch long, and it can sleep up to six people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll notice the living room couch and the Murphy bed setup. It wraps around into the area where the dinette is located, which also serves as a couch and a bed. Finally, we have the kitchen area on my right. And then behind me, we have double double size bunks and the bathroom. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, my first impression of it is that it's nice and roomy for a smaller travel trailer and it just feels really nice and big in here. Now, part of the reason for that is because this couch and dinette area is in a slide out that gives you an extra few feet of floor space in here. And the other big reason for it is because of the Murphy bed set up here in the front of the travel trailer. Now you'll notice there's a really nice comfy couch right here. And this also can jackknife out and become its own bed, but you could also use it as a Murphy bed by simply pulling down on the handle up top and lowering the Murphy bed. Now it's got this bar here, which you just lower down and it needs this just to help support the end of the mattress. So you just fold that right out. Sheet stays on there pretty well. And you've got a nice size bed here. Now I think this looks to be a short queen and it is, it's 76 inches long by 60 inches wide so that would be considered a short queen size bed in here but it's got a great uh, location to it and um, it's got all these built-in cabinets all the way around it so on each side first of all you've got a wardrobe cabinet with a bar up top so you can hang things just below that you have a drawer that pulls out on each side and then in addition to that you've got these three storage cabinets up top here. Now, we're, while we're up in this area, one other really nice feature that I like on this trailer is it's got this window overhead. So you can look out at the night sky, you can close the screen, or you can go the other way with the screen and just black out totally. So it's a very, very nice, very well done window system in here, much like you'd see in the new camp trailers. So it's got a very high quality to it as well. Also, you'll notice in the towards the head of the bed, there's a little cubby on each side, so you can store additional things in there as well. And then on the front side of the cabinetry, it has a nightstand on each side of the bed. It's certainly big enough uh, to store your phone, your computer, um, CPAP machine, whatever you need. And then there are also receptacles on each side of the bed. And on this side of the bed, there are also a couple of USB ports. Now, where's the fold located in the mattress? <clears throat> Where's the fold located? Yeah. Right about here. And so 
The nice thing about where the fold is located is that it is below your, where your hips would be located when you're laying on the bed. So you're not going to have the fold interfering with where your lower back would be located. It's below that. So it's in a pretty good location. Uh, and it does help to fold up and stow away this mattress. Now you'll notice in this trailer, there is no dinette in here. However, there are two eating areas. One of them is on this couch and the other is on the other couch. And as you can see, it comes with a really simple system to set it up. These just simply pull apart because one piece slides into the next and this piece just pulls right out as well. It's a very nice setup, very, very easy to put it together and then take it back apart again so you can stow it when you don't need it. But both couches serve both as a couch and a dinette and as you'll see in a minute, a sleeping area too. So here I am on the couch, which would be considered more of the dinette area, but this really serves three purposes as well. Like I mentioned, it's a couch. You can put your dinette table here and then you can remove it. And this actually becomes a jackknife sofa. And I'll show you how that works. You just pull up on the bottom a little bit, let it rotate out and let it lay flat. So uh, one person could very easily sleep here, maybe two little kids, but I would say one person would be better. Now you'll notice on each side of the couch, there's a nice cup holder located there. And then behind the couch, we have these two storage cabinets that are nice and deep. They're probably about 16 inches deep. Uh, very good size for storing things. There are also a couple of USB ports right in the middle. So if you're sitting here on the couch, you can plug in your phone or your tablet or whatever. There's also a nice big window behind here, which also has these fantastic shade system they, they have set up. And then above here, you have all these cabinets to have even more storage over top. Now, all the lights in this camper are put together really well. They actually all turn on and off individually, so you can set your lighting in here however you would like it to be. Most campers, you flip one switch, everything comes on. This camper is a little different where every single light can be turned on and off individually. Now, speaking of dimmers and how things light up in here, one really, really cool feature in this trailer is it has a little motion sensor for your control panel because this control panel lights up. As soon as you put your hand in front of it, boom, it lights right up for you, which is a terrific feature. I know I wish we had this in our RV. We don't even have this in our Class A RV, and it's just a really nice, convenient feature to have. And then right next to that is where your dimming switch would be, so you just simply lower the switch and you can dim all the lights together or raise it up and have them on full power. Now, just next to the couch that would be kind of in the middle of the camper in the slide out is where the entertainment center is located. I think this is probably the best place that they could mount the TV in the entire trailer. Uh, it does seem to work here. You can see it from both couches or if you're laying in bed at night. And then you've got this nice countertop area here as well with a receptacle below that that you could use from your couch or I don't know, put your coffee machine here or something here that, that needs to be powered. You can put your tablet, computer, phones, and recharge them overnight. Underneath of here, there's ample storage, which is very, very deep, a couple feet deep underneath. And then up top, we have three more cabinet doors that all open into one very large cabinet. Now, here we are in the kitchen area, and if you've seen any of our videos before, you probably know this is an inline kitchen. And what that means is that all of your kitchen appliances are in a line, which is a very, very convenient way to set up your kitchen. Now, on the left-hand side, we'll start off with the side of the cabinet. There's a couple of receptacles located on the side wall of the cabinet, so it's a very convenient spot for plugging things in. And there's also a receptacle on this side of the countertop, so if you're going to set up a toaster oven or a toaster or a coffee pot, you can plug in right here. Very, very convenient. You'll notice there's also a very large, round, deep single bowl sink in here, which I love. That's a great size sink. And then of course you have your countertop cover to give you extra countertop space. It has a good size gooseneck faucet over top. And then this has a inline two burner stove as well. And I love the fact that they have one burner in the front and then one behind it, because if these were side by side, you would lose all this countertop space over here. So it's very, very well done. Of course, you have your window over top of your countertop with this fantastic screen method that they have built in here. And then up top, we have a regular microwave oven 
and a couple of very good cabinets on either side for additional storage as well. Down below here, there is lots of storage under the kitchen sink. Also, even more storage under your countertop space. And then they've put three drawers in the center that are fully extendable for all of your kitchen utensils. Now, right next to the kitchen countertop is where we have the Furion refrigerator in here. Now, this is a 12 volt refrigerator. What that means is, what the advantage of it is, is that this refrigerator runs off of a battery or shore power. It does not run off of propane. Uh, and that means that this refrigerator has a compressor built into it. And it's the advantage of a compressor is that the refrigerator will get cold much faster. It's much more efficient to use. I know we have a propane powered refrigerator in our class C RV. It's an evaporation type refrigerator rather than a condense, uh, condenser or compressor style refrigerator. And so it takes forever to get cold. We have to turn it on and plug everything in the night before we wanna leave. So it's got the whole overnight to get cold where these compressor style fridges get cold much, much faster and they stay cold as well. And uh, so it also gives you a, a more space inside of your refrigerator and your freezer because you don't have those fins that are located inside the refrigerator. So you get full use of all the space. This fridge is 10 square feet. So it's a very good size refrigerator for this size travel trailer. Now, just past the kitchen area at the back of this trailer is where these double bunks are located. Now, each one of these bunks can have up to 300 pounds of weight on it, which is a pretty good amount of, of uh, weight for storage or for people to sleep on here. And when we look at bunk beds, we pretty much evaluate them that they need to have four things to be what we consider a very good bunk bed setup. First of all, they need to have a light. They need to have a window, they should have a receptacle, and they should also have USB ports. And these bunks have all of those elements back here, so you're in great shape for anyone to sleep back here and be very, very comfortable. Now, one other really neat feature about these bunks is that this is also a storage area. And Ember has gone ahead and made this really neat design where they've got tracks along the wall on three sides of these bunks and you can fully adjust where you'd like these bunks to sit. You can raise them up really high. You can raise them down almost to where my knee level is on the floor. You can pull them both all the way up to the ceiling and have all kinds of storage space under here. So it's a very, very cool setup. I've never seen it before, but I really think it's versatile and it allows you to get larger storage items in here like chairs, bicycles, all kinds of stuff. Um, that you need to store in here so you can have a really great camping experience. And it's got one other really cool feature I know you're gonna wanna see, but I'll have to show it to you outside. Now, here I am in the bathroom, which is also all the way in the back of this trailer, just next to the bunk beds next door. And I gotta say, this bathroom feels very, very large and spacious. Now, I'm standing inside the shower. As you guys know, I'm 5'11". And inside the skylight area, there is about 77 inches of height. So about six feet, five inches inside the skylight. The normal ceiling height in this entire camper is about six feet, six inches tall. So good amount of headspace throughout the camper. Now, when I'm standing here in the shower, I really like this surround that they've installed. It just looks very, very nice. I think this is an acrylic finish, so it's lighter, but it looks like tile and it's got that glossy finish to it. Looks very, very high end. It's got a nice shower head. And then of course your on and off valves here too. Now Ember's gone ahead and installed a retractable shower door, which is awesome because you don't want to have a curtain here sticking to the side of you while you're taking a shower. Overall, the shower's a little bit on the narrow side, so you might stand sideways in here while you're taking a shower, but I don't really see that as a big inconvenience at all. Now, just outside of the shower, we have a nice window up top here, and it's got a shade system just like in the rest of the camper, so you can go blackout or screens. You can open up open both of them and open your window and close it and all that good stuff. Down below here, there's a little handle to help you get in and out of the shower. There's a towel ring. And then of course we have all this open storage below here. And then next to that, we have our vanity area with a nice big storage cabinet below. 
a good size sink here. There's also a receptacle located over top of the sink, which is perfect for plugging in your blow dryer, shaver, whatever you need. And then it's got a very nice lighted medicine cabinet. The light is around the edges of the medicine cabinet, so it's a softer light where, I guess if you're in here and putting on your makeup or whatever, it gives you that softer light, so you ladies might really like that. Overall though, this is a really big bathroom feel. And of course, when I sit on the commode, I am passing the elbow test 100%. Now we mentioned inside that under the bunks is a fantastic storage area. It actually has two ways that you can get to all the storage from outside of the trailer. One of them's on the back of the trailer and the door opens and you can access some of your storage from this location. And then the other spot is just around the side of the trailer. So here I am on the side of the trailer and look at all of this open storage area that you can get to underneath of the bunks that are inside. It's got this huge door that opens. You have full accessibility here to get to all of your stuff. And a really cool feature that this camper also offers is it's got a screen built in here. So you can lower the screen. You can sleep in your bunks at night, have that nice air feel in here while you're sleeping away, get a great cross breeze. And it's just a really great, well thought out design for accessing all of your storage and creating a screened off area for sleeping at night. So while we're outside this camper, I also want to take a second and just point out that this is part of their Overlander series. And so these campers are meant for boondocking and going off road. You'll notice that it's got the dual axle setup. It's got the Kurt upgraded suspension in here and the amount of ground clearance that it has is really key. That's what you look for uh, when you're looking for a camper that can go off road. And this has a great amount of ground clearance. Let us know which one of these travel trailers you like the most and why in the comments down below. We love to read all of your comments, but guess what? The manufacturers comb through the comments as well because they wanna know what you like and don't like about their trailers too. And in the long run, they end up making better campers for all of us. So leave your comments down below. And if you wanna see even more trailers with bunk beds, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.